Hi, Dr. Versalati here, and in this green cast, we're going to talk about correct guessing and what that means on different types of selected response test questions in objective tests. Now, in this table, um, we have a number of different types of selected responses, true and false, multiple choice with uh, four options, matching with five items and five options, so it's a one-to-one -one match, matching with five test items and six options, so one extra uh, distractor, and matching with two extra distractors. Now what this chart shows is, um, given a certain number of uh, correct answers known by the learner. So for instance, maybe the learner knows zero of the correct answers, or maybe they know all five. So, um, and of course, anywhere in between. So this column shows how many um, in a situation where the learner knows one out of every five, two out of every five, three out of every five, four out of fi every five. If we use one of these uh, test question types, what can we expect the score to be given random choice uh, guessing, just random guessing? Uh, so uh, looking at it, we can see that if the student really doesn't know the answers, they can be more successful on true and false than on the matching with uh, one or two distractors. And we can, of course, see that if they do know all five of the right uh, answers, they're going to get a hundred no matter what type of test. So uh, the question really becomes what happens in this middle ground? And that's where most learners are, right? Most learners know one, two, three, or four out of every five correct answer. So when we look at this chart, we want to also think about uh, how our choice of what type of question we design uh, influences the validity, the reliability, the practicality, and the beneficial consequences. So let's think about that for a minute. So uh, validity is how meaningful the results are, um, if we make decisions and inferences based on those results, would those be good decisions and good inferences, conclusions to draw based on those results? So let's look at this uh, more carefully. Uh, this is the same chart, but now I have added the percentage that the student would get. Um, and again, this is assuming um, not necessarily only five questions on the test. It's just um, given this type of test item for every five test questions, what would their average score be? So we can see that if, um, if we set passing on the exam at 70%, say, a, a learner could pass the assessment knowing only two out of every five test questions. Now, uh, you can see the, the concern there, right? If a student only knows two out of every five, that's less than half, but they would be, um, because of the ability to just guess and it end up being the right answer, they would they are more likely to pass a true or false question with knowing less than half of the content. And if we set um, our learning objective at, at, let's say, 80% in order to be able to move on, we can see that um, a learner might only know three out of every five, and they would still be, it, the score would indicate that they would be ready to be to move on when they only actually know about 60% of that information. So this is why true and false questions are um, very, uh, they threaten the validity. But let's look at some of the other options. Um, in 
multiple choice if passing is at 70. Students at least have to know every uh, three correct answers out of every five in order to be passing. And um, if 80% is the threshold for continuing, they have to know four out of every five. So that's, that's starting to be a better alignment of what we would think because they, they're they closer to what what the standard we set uh, on their, based on reality, which would be four out of every five, and they would have to know four out of every five correct answers to pass. Now looking at the matching with no distractors, so if there's five options and um, five questions, notice that they uh, a learner it's on average could get a hundred percent by only knowing four out of the five and they can reach the threshold of of eighty percent accuracy on this type of assessment knowing only three out of five which is sixty percent of the content again think about the implications if a student passes the assessment at a threshold of 80%, but really only knows 60% of the information. Would that decision to let that student move on to the next uh, level or move on to the next unit, would that be a good decision? No, chances are that that score doesn't um, measure the student's understanding it well enough in order for that decision to be a valid decision. So we can see that um, matching one-to-one -one is a threat to validity similar to true and false. But if um, there's at least one good distractor, you can see that they um, have to, in order to hit, hit above the threshold of 80%, they have to know at least four out of every five. And of course, it's even better to have two options. And then uh, the other beneficial consequences with those distractors, they give us diagnostic information of what the student does not yet know. Maybe a misunderstanding that can be clarified in subsequent information. Same with the distractors in the multiple choice. You can see that they end up being similar because they have distractors that not only help us uh, inform future instruction, but it also makes the resulting score more valid because correct guessing isn't artificially inflating those scores.